Welcome to Death Metal Chronicles Technology Adventures, episode number three, I think. Who knows? 3.2. I'm Wolf. I'm Corey. And this is our friend Sailor Jerry. Lovely spice for all. Cute story on the back of it. It's not plagiarism to read this over the air, is it? You know, the father of old school, school tattooing. Norman Sailor Jerry Collins was an invent, innovator, and a true independent spirit whose work is still revered today. Maybe I should have practiced this a few times first. A master craftsman, his artistry and imagery remain timeless, as does the rum that has become that bears his signature. Our family company makes this rum the authentic way. Strong, spiced, and smooth. Mix it with something, or just pour it over ice, and let our work speak for itself. I didn't butcher it too bad. This is what kind of rum? Sailor Jerry, it's a spiced rum. And what I like about it, I like I prefer it over Captain Morgan's. It has a bit more caramel in it, and you can taste some, uh, some cherry in it. Yeah. can dig that. Want to bust it out, open these glasses over here in the back? Two glasses. Ah, there you go. Yeah, put it over here. To uh, Sailor Jerry. God bless his soul. Oh, man. Definitely better than Colonel's Pride. That is way better than Colonel's Pride. We still love the Colonel. The Colonel's got it going on. Hey, nine bucks a liter? That's pretty legit. I can dig that. So what's going on in your world? I uh, started playing around with Linux Mint. You're telling me about this. How long did it actually take you to install it? Uh, got it installed over lunch. I did the thing where I start the install, go to lunch, come back, it was done. Badass. Did you have any problems downloading any packages? No. no did you install Flash or MP3? Or um, restricted extras? They were pre-installed. Really? I believe so. Restricted extras were also in there too. I, I may have no, wait, I, may, I may have installed Flash and a, uh, a PDF reader. Okay. Yeah. You know. But you want to bust it out? Oh yeah, yeah. One thing I liked about it is it has apparently some pretty good driver support. I installed it on a laptop. And not only And as you all know one of the few, one of the issues with Linux over the years has been, you know, will this video card work with it or will mm -hmm. this sound card work with it? Oh well I can get this mouse to work but not this one. How do we fix the driver problem? How yeah. do we get it to communicate? So I've got this old laptop. Really, it's dying. So, you know, what do I care? <laughs> and what amazed me was it didn't just install on this machine, but the hotkeys for the volume, they work. Really? It actually could, could get that? That's a badass. I put Skype on here. It recognizes the microphone and the webcam. Actually, yeah, did you have to um, download Skype um, from its uh, from an APK file, I downloaded it just from the native Skype file. I really? mean, web page. Oh, really? And it actually worked. Yeah. Wow, that's impressive. Usually, I've had to get like uh, PPAs or whatever just to get it to work. Wow, that's actually really quick. I wonder how many seconds that was. No. Oh, and you have a, a CPU GPU monitor on top there, like a widget. Yep. That's legit, dude. It's got widgets just like Windows. That's awesome that it comes to that you don't have to do it. You didn't have to download anything to do that, right? No. 
That's legit. Because you have to download stuff with Ubuntu to be able to get that to work. Yeah. Which I actually tried to do it the other day and it didn't work. I followed some tutorial and then it wouldn't work on me getting uh, getting widgets or whatever. Yeah. Well, I think Mint, I'm not, don't quote me on this one, but when you, when you go, when I went to the Mint page and I read through it, it reads like they've been around longer than Ubuntu. Probably, I wouldn't be surprised. They try to, you know, they, uh, <clears throat> I don't want to say it. When I read through their support files, it sounds like they have more <coughs> technical people working on their support files and their drivers. It, it has more of a collective as opposed to we are the Ubuntu company and this is what... <laughs> we'll give you this version for free so yeah. we can charge you for the server version. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't get that with Mint. And I'm, I'm not exactly a fan about how Ubuntu kind of just dictates things to you. I mean, they just dictate what you can and cannot have with their distribution, which is just not cool. Whereas, you know, there's like CentOS and some other ones where you have to package things yourself. You literally have to put, like, Arch or, um, like some of the other distributions where you literally have to package things together so you have it exactly how you want it, but you have to build the OS itself. Yeah. And those are, I mean, most of the dependencies are not there. I mean, most of the things you would normally need are not there at all because they want you to change it and to learn from it, which mm -hmm. I think is, is a big difference than where, obviously Ubuntu is going for a more noob user base, so. <laughs> well, the same thing here with Mint. It's turnkey. I downloaded the ISO, took the ISO image, created a DVD, stuck it in the drive, rebooted the machine. I followed the on-screen prompts, you know, didn't even really think about it. Just click, click, boom. Wasn't worried about formatting the hard drive or anything. What did I care if this thing got to a zap, right? It's on its last leg. Yeah, go to your uh, pro, uh, uh, properties. I want to see how many, uh, how big the ISO is on there. Or how big the, uh... So what? You mean... The actual partition is where the, um... My total hard drive, 141.2 gigabytes. I got 124.1 free. And I've downloaded a little bit of stuff. A couple of programs. Yeah, if you go into, like, a disk, disk drive or, like, properties, it should show you how big... Yeah, system settings down there. If you go to system settings, um... If you go to system settings, it'll tell you... Um, I know the system settings looks like it's straight out of a uh, an Apple machine. Does it? Is that how it looks? Yeah. I wouldn't know. Okay, well, not straight out of an Apple machine, but it looks like a carbon copy. Of... So, what are you looking for again? I'm a little confused by this. I'm not really used to... Uh... Alright, well, close your eyes and think. What is it that I want? Well, usually in properties and settings, it just shows you, like where your drives are, because I wanted to see how big the actual OS is on the the drive. Uh, give or take a gig or two. You know, when I was over here in Dolphin, you know, that Linux distro install, after it finished downloading its patches and whatnot, it's about 20 gigs. Is there, is there a disk utility in there? Yeah, but... Because the disk utility would show you. Yeah. Or it should be like where your version of of Linux. Is. I don't know where to yeah. go for that. But part of, part of the thing is, is that when it installed, you got more than just the Linux operating system. You know, was it applications? Here we go. You know, it came with an Office suite. Oh, you didn't actually have to download LibreOffice. That's freaking sweet. That came, yeah, that came straight off the install. That's legit. Or maybe go to computer. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, I'm really confused by this. Oh, my touchpad works too. By the way, <laughs> did you have to set that up in uh, with Windows before? Uh, depends on which version I was using. You know, early on with Seven Pro when I installed it on here, I did. Oh, have you tried you uh, with uh, Check this out. YouTube with this? No. Did I remember to bring it? Try to find my wireless mouse. Um. 
Oh, schnazzy, schnazzy. I may have left it on the table. But my Linksys wireless mouse with, that uses the unifying receiver here. Yeah. Uh, worked. That's pretty badass. I haven't tried the keyboard with it yet, but yeah. Now, yeah, go into, go into uh, YouTube on uh, your browser and see uh, if you actually have, um, if that's installed, or not installed, but Flash is working correctly and all that other stuff. Oh, yeah, I had YouTube working. You know, Firefox or Chrome? That's so weird, the whole box system thing. I haven't seen that in a very long time in person. I mean, I, other people have, you know, done tutorials and stuff, but I haven't. It's really weird to see it. What do you mean by box? Uh, the whole drop-down menu system. Oh, yeah, you don't have the series of tubes. No, what I don't have. Internet at x <laughs> Yeah, the series of tubes. Huh? The GBs and the Wi-Fis. You want the one with the cloud. I want it now. Yeah, so which, what's your network? It's none of those. Can you go down? I thought there was more down there. I wonder why it's not showing up. That's really weird. This is cool. I like how this whole connection thing works. It's very straightforward. And it's more pretty to look at. The whole uh, file system, I guess, in a way. It's not the Nautilus file system, which is really dreary and just dry in a way. Yeah, did you um, download Steam at all for this? To play Steam games? Yes. Right there. Do you have to be connected to the internet to play the games? Yeah. Yeah. You do? Well, I didn't actually download any games for it, so... How easy was the Steam download? As easy as Skype. And you just went on their website and got it? Yeah. Wow. What version of uh, Mint is this? The newest one. Which is what number? Do you know? Uh, Q. <laughs> Mint <laughs> Q. I'm very confused about where you go to find out stuff, though. It's not very forward in that uh, to find out what your actual it's probably very simple but uh, dude it's just like changing an alternator you know the first time you do it you're like alright how do I adjust the tension of the belt <laughs> me being a noob it's very confusing after, after you change maybe account details you can go there and uh, probably won't have it that's there that's gonna be user accounts dude it might be in the same thing though in the same box or whatever No. This is how it was for me when I when I first looked at uh, Windows 8. I was just completely baffled. Like, well, what? see, now is this, when I... <laughs> the whole box system, so you can still get around and do something. You can still press the X button, and the X just takes you to quit. You know, there's the quit button, and that's fine. But with Windows 8, you really have no clue where... To even go to get out of the browser, or like to get out of like an application. What, what you what you do is just don't run it as the little apps. When you're at the start screen, just go to the desktop. Oh, there's no there's no start button. Yeah, there is. Windows eight. It's just not on the. You, they fix it with eight dot one because people really oh, complain. Okay. Oh, I don't have the button on my screen. The button was still on the keyboard. See, this is me as a noob. I was actually at, like, a UPS store, and I didn't know what to do. I mean, like, it was the first time I'd ever used it. I mean, I would only had used Ubuntu in the past, like, five years. Right. And so I went to look at it, and there's no start button. Like, it locks you inside of the, 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 the Windows thing. And I'm like, what the hell? What am I supposed to do? How do I get out of it? You know, I'm, like, pressing Escape and the Control 4 and, you know, do or Control F4. Yeah, control F4 and doing all kinds of stuff. Control delete and like just trying to get out of stuff. I just couldn't. All you had to do was an Alt Tab. Really? Or take your mouse and put it up in the upper left hand corner of the screen. It would have shown you everything you had open, and you could have just selected what you wanted. 
It's so stupid. Yeah. Or you could just hit the start button. Because a person who's never used it before... I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a fairly competent person when it comes to computers. But there was just no way to get out of things with, with a simple, you know, X in a box. I mean, hell, even with Ubuntu on my giant-ass 32-inch uh, uh, TV, I mean, right here, there's, you know, there's the, the stop and the, uh, you know, the X, and then there's the little thing to minimize, and then there's the big window, and then there's the files. I mean, it all, it's just, you know, it's just right there. I mean, it doesn't show it. Like, but, I mean, you just go up there, you're going to figure it out, you know. But All right, so, so next time, when you go over to my place, I'll put the desktop up on the 36-inch, or is it a 24-inch? Anyway, put it up on the big screen. We'll show you the differences, and I'll have you navigate in Windows 8 and almost liking it. I want to say within about half an hour. No, it's okay. I'd rather not. I don't want to subject myself to that. Oh. It just kind of hurts. So, for all you viewers who may have uh, been intrigued, I'm using a fancy new device here. This is the Tascom DR100 Mark Number 2. Uh, this is a audio interface that has um, 40, I think it's 48 watts, is phantom power. So, it's got phantom power. It records with these two fancy, fancy... Um, microphones that are already on board and they're protected with you know little metal thingies on the outside it has you know physical controls which you can actually push and control and all the dials and such um what's really cool too is it even has this is uh, stick um mu uh, speaker so that if you need to listen to your stuff and you don't actually have like headphones or something like that then you can be able to um listen to it on the fly um, it takes regular SDHC cards, um, so you, you're not going to be screwed if you, you know, only have the, the big cards or whatever, um, you know, which can really put you in a lot of trouble. Um, I think it's really sweet, the fact that, you know, they put a lot of thought in this, where, you know, you can get a 5-volt um, charger, and you can charge it. Um, you can use the rechargeable battery. That is also uh, can be recharged through USB FireWire. I think that's the original FireWire cable. It's, is that USB one <laughs> or it's just a USB cable? <laughs> it's at least two dot Look at the connector. Oh, this thing right here. Whatever the hell this is. Is this uh this is USB one or two point That's a mini connector. It's the original series of tubes. No, it's a big one. Well, a big one is what I consider is like a B that you plug into a printer. Eh. Well, you can charge it with that. You can also put um, AA batteries on it, which is freaking sweet. So, you know, if you're in a really hard pinch and you need to get audio, um, you can use that. Um, and it's fairly simple to start up there. I mean, there's a lot of documentation that you have to learn about it. But this set me back about $200, but for me to get really good audio... Um, I'm really, really, really impressed. Um, it isn't something that you can normally just, you know, buy and be able to have a separate audio for all of your, um, video projects, or say you just need to do dictation, if you're a medical guy, or whether you're doing, um, combat support stuff where you need to get, um, audio of maybe bad guys in a village somewhere, you can pick up some sort of fancy, um, shotgun type of mic. Um, I don't exactly know the kind of mics you'd be doing for a long range um, audio capture. That's for all you atmospheric guys out there and whoever dudes that do that kind of work. Um, yeah, this thing's pretty awesome. I'm fairly impressed so far. Um, I'd actually like to uh, buy some some microphones and some other things to hook up to this. Uh, it'll really help out and give me a lot more ability to do better interviews. Um, Especially via interview like fancy, fancy people. I think this will really help. Oh, what's this? Analog clock settings? Oh, yeah, playing with the clock. I was curious if I could change the color on it. You might need, uh, not, it wouldn't be Unity. It'd be like a tweak tool that you can get. Yeah. The tweak tool would be pretty sweet. I was kind of thinking, as cool as it looks, it is look, does look a little black and white. 
I could not find any way to uh, verify what version of Linux I'm using. I'm really confused by that. <laughs> ah, more color. <laughs> For the viewers who uh, are now listening, since I am not uh, doing video right now, uh, you would enjoy the fancy, fancy photos that Linux Mint has. Uh, they've got this fancy picture. You want to describe it? Oh. It's a CGI image of this this one lady's best assets. And over top of her, her best assets. And, and that little mini skirt, it says, Linux Mint, from freedom came elegance. They've actually got a whole bunch of these out there. Really? You, if you just Google Linux Mint, and then click on the image tabs, you'll find a bunch of them where it... To be politically correct, I want to use the word, it has a healthy looking woman. And then next to that, the lines from freedom came at elegance. <laughs> there you go, just go up there and click on images. There's one, already. Wow, I'm very impressed. Uh, these are pretty fantastic. Uh, I guess the ladies really do love Linux Mint. Linux is sexy, dude. It's got it going on. Especially when they got foxy ladies who are like, hey, I'm a really hot chick. Well, 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 something you gotta realize is, you know, you take a copyrighted image, you change, I forget how many things about it, and then the copyright no longer applies. So, these women in these photos may have had no idea that they were posing for a Linux Mint commercial. <laughs> you know? It's like, oh, hey, they're in a green tank top. <laughs> they're a Linux Mint girl now. You know? It's beautiful. Which, uh, what is the, ne the newest version of Linux Mint? So, Linux Mint version... 16? 16 Petra. Um... Oh, cool, and they do put out 32-bit and 64-bits. Yeah. And oh, so you can actually get them under the different um, skins. So you can get c yeah. Cinnamon or Mate, Mate with no codex, uh, a KDE version of Linux well, Mint. KDE is what I'm using. Really? Okay. Yeah. The XFCE version. Um, this is cool, and they actually tell you which ones are supported and which ones aren't. Oh, a version without multimedia support for magazines, companies, and distributors in the USA, Japan, and countries where the legislation allows patents to apply to software and distribution of restricted technologies may require the acquisition of third-party licenses. How fucked up is America right now? It's sad that they would even need to put that out. That copyright has lasted this long to where... You know, you would actually need to put a disclaimer on what you make. Because these guys are, you know, they're putting this out there and you can download it for free and, you know, you can pay them or you don't pay them. I mean, I donated. Did you? Uh, it's five bucks. I'm broke. That's a lot of money. Dude, for me, it, that's that's almost an hour's work. Your five dollars plus the five dollars of another person, it's a lot of money. These guys are getting in probably hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to be able to spend the kind of money that they need to spend to develop, make a fantastic website, host the files to allow people to download them. Well, on top of that, it's, it's a turn, it was turnkey, dude. I put the disk into a la a laptop, which has more proprietary components than a desktop does. Really? Yep. I mean, I, I mean try to put this keyboard here. Into another machine, you're gonna have a darn time. You have a difficult time. You know, the uh, the screen. Try to get that to work with another video card. You're gonna have a hard time. Try to get it to work with another motherboard. <laughs> yeah. You even one that has the same Intel embedded graphics. You're gonna have a hard time. Uh, yeah. What What did you actually have a hard time with uh, when you installed Linux Mint? Um. 
I made a mistake when I was burning the ISO. I, I forgot to uh, <laughs> burn it in a way that would unpack the ISO image. And I wound up just copying it to a DVD. So oh, I put yeah. it in, I'm like, well, why is this not booting? Yeah. You'll boot off a CD. What's wrong with you? So I put it back into the, uh, to my working machine. And I'm like, oh, here's my problem. I have one file, and it ends with .iso. <laughs> so I did my Rambo routine, which is where I hold the disc in my hand and literally just crush it from the outside until it snaps into about three different pieces. Oh, God. Yes. It freaks people out. So much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I burned a new DVD and I put it in, started it up. <laughs> That's all I did. It, se it seems fairly carefree. I mean, I'm really impressed that you know you wouldn't have to have a a, a ton of ton of problems. Uh, yeah. I mean, put put it this way, I, I'm pretty confident that I could take this version of Linux Mint and. Uh, Pick a machine, put it on there, and let's go ahead and grab some 90-year-old woman from retirement home, and I can teach her how to use it. That's legit. I think, it, and it is interesting with Linux, what not a lot of people are talking about is the plasticity um, programs that are out there. Um, I've seen some different uh, different pro programs, um, applications within. Um, I think BS yeah, BSD had a couple of different programs, and uh, Ubuntu put out um, different programs to be able to help. Uh, people with mental, um, with like, uh, I can't find the actual names of these uh, programs. I don't know why they're not listed. Um, help people with memory. Um, yeah, I'm just coming up with like graphical user stuff. There's a program that I had saw that they were use a lot, utilizing it in a different, uh, in a, a old folks home and they were able to help them um, regain some of their short term memory loss and also help with their long term memory with uh, plasticity programs that would be able to assist them in short term memory and long term memory uh, I cannot find Can't it Can't you also get that for Chromium? The Chrome OS? They might have a web application I guess This was an actual application that was on Ubuntu and they set them up in um, retirement homes in different places uh, so that the elderly could actually gain most of their uh, short-term memory back. Um, and just the more repetitive uh, repetition of, of doing it was able to help them regain that, at least the short-term, for sure, um, loss. Uh, so there's actually like um, psychologists and, and different medical uh, personnel that actually helped in that. And I was actually really impressed. I was surprised they did that. There's a lot of money to put together a program like that and to push it out on something as big as Ubuntu definitely costs money. Jose, is that you? Come in. Jose, meet Corey. Hey. Corey, meet Jose. Nice to meet you, man. What's up? Andrew Wood. We're recording a new show on our fancy, uh, our fancy thing. Hey there, guests. It's Jose. Some what? Sailor Jerry. Where is it? Here you go. It's rum. Mm, spice rum. Spice oh, rum. Oh, yeah. Dress with that, Cinnamon, some caramel, a hint of cherry. How was your day at school, Jose? That was weird. What? Sit down. Have a conversation. We're on the air. Why, uh, He has left the room, but not the building. <laughs> and the magic of cinema is that 
no one will ever know there was brief silences when I delete them out with audacity. <laughs> oh, Jose's brought his banana, and now he's about to hook it up. Do you guys want a banana? <laughs> I hear one in ten like it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that room? Spiced. It's good stuff. Right. So, yeah, my class. So, you go to school? Nah. Right. He's a dropout. It's cool, Hard Knocks. It's cool, man. Yeah, Corey's a dropout. It's hard sometimes, right? Because all those Texans are damn racists. You Texan? Blame it on Obama. Oh, what? I blame it on Bush and Obama. Ah. Dude, come on. We blame it on Reaganomics. <laughs> so, how's your day in school? Like? Or the coming apocalypse. Hmm. You guys hear the apocalypse tomorrow? Not tomorrow, but Saturday. A snow apocalypse? No. Also, you yeah, get, I think, an NPR or something. But uh, apparently, uh, there's a god out there from, well, Norse god or something. I don't know. I don't know which one. Supposedly predicted the end of the times on Saturday. But there's a contest for, like, some festival. So they're thinking it might be, like, a marketing scheme. So they could, you know, spend their money for the end of times. Makes you wonder about the Mayan calendar. Did the Mayans plan the end of time just as a marketing scheme? It's all a marketing scheme. <laughs> hey, so, today's the end of the world. Norse god, right. end of the world, Ragnarok. Oh, Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Uh, according to the wikis from Norse mythology... As a series of future events, including the great battle foretold to ultimately result the death of a number of major figures, including the god Odin, Thor, Tyre, Friar, Heldemlar, and Loki, the occurrence of various natural disasters and subsequent submersion, uh, uh, submersion of the world in water. Didn't that happen with Noah and the Ark? Afterward, the world will resurface anew and fertile. It happens every once in a while, right? Surviving, the returning gods will meet, and the world will be repopulated by two human survivors. Ragnarok is an important event in the Norse canon, and has been the subject of scholarly discourse and theory. Uh, so, when these gods come out to play, how's a Christian guy going to feel about that? I'm pretty sure that Ragnarok was a Christian, because he's a white guy. I don't think it affects you. Are you, um... Do you believe in Norse mythology? D- no, I'm thinking there's going to be like, you know, UFC death match between the gods. <laughs> oh. A bunch of bros out there. Bro, whoa. Exactly. Where's, hold up. You're, you're ripping my tap out shirt, bro. Well, how's, that, like, how's that working? Huh? How's that working? Uh, this is a Tascam DR, uh, DR100 Mark II. <laughs> and it runs off of a SD card. That records to it, and then there's these two fancy little microphones, and hopefully your audio will actually come up good. Will it? How do I know for sure? Well, we'll check we at don't. the end of the broadcast. The end of the broadcast, we'll know. <laughs> you know, maybe we should start like doing like five minutes before and then testing it out. No. <laughs> sound check one. No. Two, right? Sound check three. one two one two. How do I sound in this? Your vocals corner? are always horrible. What about over here? <laughs> How about over here? What about over here? God, you're going to overpower the mic. It actually shows... Yeah, no, what about no, over here? Yeah, don't do that. It actually shows a little thingy. That's good you do that. Because it shows a little thingy when you overpower the mic. Oh, really? So I'll have to fix that. Sweet. Hey, can you hear me now? Right. So what did you do at school today? So yeah, my, my school. I go to Novo. Where'd you go? In school hard knocks. I dug trenches and swung from power lines. That's really... It's a hard school. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm taking this, uh, this uh, music appreciation class. Right, and my teacher is like seventy-one years old, so he's really old school, but he's really weird, and he's black. He looks like you ever seen The Shining? The Shining, no. Stanley Kubrick, no, never seen it. Well, oh, wait a minute, that's the one with the people in the hotel. The hotel with the bushes. Yeah. Do you remember the the old black dude, the caretaker of the whole hotel? In the first one or the second one? The first one. There's a second one. It must be horrible. Anyways, he looks like that, only fatter. So every time <laughs> I'm in his class, I'm like, holy shit, The Shining. 
Anyways, <laughs> so his, his way of teaching is really weird. And, like, it's really fucking weird. So today, um, I guess I came late. I don't know. I thought my class was, like, 7.30, but I guess it's at 7. Anyways, I go in and it's dumb <laughs> as fuck. picture of the guy dressed up like a dog? Which one? That one. That's hilarious. Oh, right, right, right. I've it's, never uh, seen this before, so... He, he's he's uh, hallucinating, and he sees he sees things in the hotel that aren't really there. Because supposedly he's been there, you know what I mean? D- does the guy in the fluffy dog outfit... Does, does it just mean does the mouth look like something from a wild boar? Yeah. Anyways, that scene, I think he is blowing him. And then they're like, hey, dude. Go away. You know. It's not cool. Yeah. Dude's blowing other dudes. That's Dude, not right. That's very cool. Hey, as long as it Fuck doesn't, no. as long as it doesn't affect me and mine. Yeah, I'll as, go long, for as long it. as they're not like sucking my schlong, I'm okay with it. Oh yeah, no, no, I'm totally about that. I'm just not about dudes doing, you know, stuff with me. I'm totally about other dudes doing stuff with other dudes. That's, that's great. fine with me. It means there's more ladies for me. Right. That's it equals out the universe. So yeah, funny story. I was in Hawaii and I went to a gay bar. Great. That's got to be per- Did you get fun. free drinks? No, but there were two chicks there, and everybody else was gay. So my friends started hitting on them. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty easy for them. <laughs> That's probably exactly why they were there. <laughs> Actually, they were there by accident. Really? The same way I noticed it was a gay bar, they noticed it was a gay bar too. Because I went in there, we all went there, it was like four people, and they all went to the bathroom, I, and I'm the one that went to go find the table. And oh, was, what was the name of that place? I actually know what you're talking about. I don't know. Uh, but, It's on the end of, it's on a... Uh, Kalakaua Avenue, I think. I don't know. Yeah, but it's Hawaii. It's hard to distinguish the rainbows. Yeah. <laughs> I miss Hawaii a lot, dude. It's a lot of fun. It's a really nice place to live. I like the trees. You been there? Huh. Yeah. When'd you go? Uh, was it a year ago? Or... Oh, really? So you've been there lately? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Dude, the best piece of meat I ever had in my life. Uh, I forget which island we were on. It's a place called Duke's. And I ordered the ribeye. And the lady goes, the waitress goes, wait, stop, before you order it, we keep it in a warmer as one big chunk of meat. And when people order it, we carve it off. Right now it's medium rare. So I said, ah, perfect. I love my steak medium rare. Normally when I get my steak, they take it out of wherever they have it, they put it on the grill, they flip it. So you have like this medium rare going to the middle. This was different. It was medium rare through and through, except for the outer... Bare, you know the, the small outer yeah, edge beautiful. which is where it was seasoned dude this thing was almost an inch thick and just solid medium rare meat oh that's beautiful oh that it is, is legit. it was I sunk my teeth into there you feel the the juices just, just gush across your tongue you just kind of swallow it then you get to chew your meat because it was so soft it was like each bite of steak you got to enjoy it twice was this on was this on on Oahu or was this on the big island it was on a smaller island so it's like Maui or something or Maui, yeah. I've actually never been to Dukes before. Yeah, it, whichever island has a Hilton with the hotel with the rainbow painted on it. <laughs> That's every island in Hawaii. <laughs> well, well, the other half of the, the the other half of the time I spent there, we were either doing the sights, you know, swimming with the sharks. Well, was it built up or was it not built up? It, was it like a tired ginormous city like L.A. or was it very? Oh no, it was like here's the hotel, here's some city streets, and then you're in the boondocks. That's probably the big island then. It the, the Dole Plantation was on that island. I guess it was Oahu then. That's where Dole Plantation is. is, is yeah, Oahu. That's where I grew up. And uh, you know, when we weren't doing the sites or something like that, I was walking around the beach with a, a styrofoam coffee cup filled full of that macadamia nut liquor or, or <laughs> oh, liqueur. <man. laughs> that's a party right there, dude. I had to have my cup of coffee wherever I went. <laughs> So what else were you learning in a music appreciation class? Um, hey, kitty cat. Thank you. We have a guest visitor. Hey, baby. What's the cat's name? Baby. Baby. Baby, come here. Hey, wolf, what's in your taco? Gato. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it was dark, and they were wa- all watching like YouTube videos. And uh, there was this really old lady... Um, in front of the class and I didn't see the teacher at all I was like what the fuck I guess he like died or something because he's really old or maybe he got fired because he was teaching us like YouTube yeah it's YouTube so it was weird 
And he has this uh, this helper, like this this dude with like I don't know, he's got something. I think it's Alzheimer's? Asperger's. I don't know. He's got he's got a helper that like helps him out because he's so old. But he he's like mentally I don't know what it is. He's just there's something about him that just isn't right. Does, Does he just, cuss at random? No, yeah. no. He, he has he has fucking he's he's uncoordinated is what I'm trying to say. Let's he's just awkward. It as fuck. could be Therese, or it could be he has a imbalance within uh, his uh, equilibrium. Yeah. So like he can't gauge like like early, when you, early, yeah if you made a turn purposes. and you didn't have your equilibrium or you had like a perforated eardrum and you tried to make a turn yeah. with a car you'd crash your car immediately. Yeah. We were we we're making circles one day right like this. He was going all sorts of weirdness. I was like, dude, you can't do that. Anyways, so it was really dark. I was just watching YouTube videos for like an hour and a half straight, right? I didn't see a teacher at all. Anyways, it's like 10 minutes before the end of class. All of a sudden, he pops out of nowhere, turns on the light. I'm like, what the fuck? First off, I was like, why, why are the lights on? And then I hear his voice. I'm like, fuck, he's alive. Damn it. I mean, I don't hate the guy. It's just really weird the way yeah. he teaches. I'm not used to it. But, uh... Well, you said he uses a, he a democratic presence. socialist style of teaching, meaning that everyone gets to participate. speak and participate, participate and yeah. have a voice within the class. Right. As opposed to dictating to you what you're supposed to learn. Yes. The, that's... I guess this would be like the anarcho-socialist style of teaching, which is basically anar- anarcho-socialism. Meaning that everyone gets a voice and how they govern themselves. Well, I understand that, but when you're trying to learn something, it's kind of hard to teach yourself in an hour and a half. And this is exactly why he's doing it. Because he's tired of everybody dictating to students what they should be taught. Whereas, each person has a voice in what their own teaching should be. So, why don't you dictate the way you want to be learned or taught? Is it okay to suggest pulling up the porn channel instead of YouTube? Yeah, why not? If you have a voice within your class. This is this is the kind of style of discourse that he's trying to utilize. Which I, is very important because that's exactly what he's trying to do. He's trying to create a commonality between everyone. Yeah. Where even though you might be, you know, someone who is a Marine, you know, mm. Bolivian or whatever. Right, because you know what? I, don't know. I, I have this fetish about lawn furniture posed in suggestive positions. <laughs> what? <laughs> When you have nothing good to say, just say something really off the wall. Right? <laughs> Titties and beer. Line furniture in suggestive positions. So, yeah. He so, really, when in doubt, he really surprised me. Go on military times. And <laughs> whatever you find, report on it. So. Just close your eyes and click something. Close. Okay. Uh, military Times Roulette. <laughs> Don't turn on me coins. Marine Corps Marathon opens this afternoon at 3 p.m. Today? I thought that was uh, last year. I think it happens yearly. Yeah, but I thought, is it military um, registration for the Marine Corps Marathon opens this afternoon at three PM? That in October the twenty sixth race. Why is it up now? I don't know. Early bird much? The early Marine ones. Well, it'll be Friday soon. So Friday. <laughs> Here we go. Something that's not news, that's supposedly news. You want to read this one, Jose? Restaurant refuses to seat Marine veteran because of his service dog and training. A Marine Corps veteran says he was told to leave a Texas restaurant because he brought his dog and training to be certified as his service animal. I take my dog a lot of places, so I don't really look for permission anymore because I've never had any problems. Don Brown of Spring, Texas, told Marine Corps Times on Thursday, I've had one or two people make a comment, but I tell them it's a service dog and that's the end of it. But on Wednesday, Brown took his Doberman Truman to the Riverside Inn Marina in 
Channel View, Texas, a waitress <laughs> said she needed to check to see if she could seat him because dogs are not allowed in the restaurant. After several minutes, the man emerged from the back office, yelled from across the bar, Can you see? Brown asked, or Brown said, taken aback. Brown said, Excuse me, and the man asked again if Brown had the sense of sight. Wow. Rude much. So I asked him what his name was, and he told me his name, and he told me that I was catching an attitude and I needed to leave. Dude, what the fuck is this? What, why is this in military time? <laughs> this is why we're reading it. I'm a pretty non confrontational kind of guy. At that point, I said, <laughs> really, because of your attitude, we are going to leave. This is wrong. <laughs> One of Brown's friends called a local TV news station about what happened, and KPRC Local 2 in Houston reported the incident on Wednesday. I honestly didn't want it to go this far, Brown said. My whole reason for even talking to the news was so that somebody else didn't have to go through this. You run to ignorance every once in a while. Marine Corps Times called the Riverside Inn Marina on Thursday. The man answering the phone said, we have no comment. Good move. Nice. Um, Brown provided Marine Corps Times with a copy of his DD-214, which says he served in the Marine Corps from 1986 to 1999. Eight years. Eight years, right? Yeah. Yeah. He received an honorable discharge and left the service as a sergeant. After the leaving, after leaving the Marine Corps, Brown was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress stress stemming from his experiences in the Gulf War. He said, "How old is he?" I don't think it's said. He has had treatment for about eight months. The dog's training includes taking him out in public. On Wednesday, he the man at the restaurant, got right up in Brown's face. So Truman did his job of getting between, wow, Brown and the danger. He wakes me up from my nightmares, which is how he helps me get at home, Brown said. I generally didn't go out very much anymore. I haven't worked in 24 months because I have just seem to have developed a lot of social anxieties. And so Truman helps me go out and not always be on high alert. I can relax and enjoy life. For a little bit. Oh, there's one comment. This is more than General Amos' story. That's just wrong. Guidelines. You shared in the militarytimes.com community. Oh, wait. Okay. That's not the comment. The comment is, okay. that's just wrong. That's just wrong by Lou Dunham. Top commentator. Drum guy at the Carrollton Music Center. Hmm. I it right at home. Hey, can we comment? Yeah. We're not commenting. No. Comment. That's our, comment. our comment is on Didn't here. Comment, right? I got a DD214 form. I should be allowed to comment. Yeah, right? Yeah. You weren't in the military? What? Uh, I was. I got kicked out after getting really sick. Boom. Oh, so you, oh, you, so you actually have one. Do they did they get you your clearance while you were in uh, doing your thing? Nah. They didn't try I was to just a heavy wheeled mechanic, so I didn't get one. How is any of this news? Troops prefer cash yeah, over in kind like benefits. In basic training or something? Yeah. That sucks, man. Did you make it all the way? No. What was cool. entertaining was, was when, the, when the doctor goes, At some point last night, you died. I don't know why you're here, but looking at these numbers, yeah, you definitely died last night. <laughs> hmm. What ended up happening while you were in training? Just another tick mark on the board of, you know, the times that Corey should have died. Hmm. Did you say you. Busted out your knee or something, or what? What would you do? Ah, oh, no, I got pneumonia real bad. And Ooh, pneumonia's big, yeah. big ass fucking no no, basic training. Yeah, it started out as just like a think, runny nose, and think, then it, I think everybody's pneumonia. Yeah. When'd you go? So winter, summer. What the fuck, dude? How'd you get pneumonia? Uh, they were giving this pneumonia shot. They it gave you a pneumonia you, shot. It helped keep you from getting pneumonia. Shut up, dude. Yeah, I got pneumonia from the pneumonia shot. When the fuck was this? 2003. What? That's ridiculous. Yeah. So, I'd complain about being sick, so they'd send me like this little medic. It would reach up in this wicker basket and give you kind of the Sudafed, the cough drops. Yeah. And I went to see that guy about three times. And no. it started out as a runny nose, just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Right. And I got to the point where I was 
I had green and orange stuff coming out of my face. Gross. Yeah. The, like your pores? It was it was a hundred and something outside, and when I was sitting in the shade, I was cold. I remember that. Jesus Christ. Your immune system probably died. Yeah, it sounds like they did some fucking experiment on you. Eh. Where were you? Huh? Where were you? Uh, Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Was there army? Yeah. <laughs> I like the Marine Corps kind of... <laughs> I'm where's sorry, that, where's sorry. that fucking pussy ass place? Is that army? That's not me. That's the marine inside you. Like, where's sorry. that fucking pussy ass place? That ain't the Marine Corps. <laughs> what, uh, what, what, what? You weren't on the island. You weren't a marine. <laughs> <laughs> what battalion were you? Oh god. Because I don't, I don't know, know if, if you guys have the same thing. Because for some reason they like to fuck with the third battalion in, in boot camp. I don't know why. I don't know if you guys. Nah. No. And maybe it's just a, maybe it's a thing. I don't remember. What was your M West going to be? 63 Sierra, heavy wheeled mechanic. That would have actually been a mechanic. badass gig. Well, what would, that, what would you do? Just fix weird? Oil wheels? changes and car washes on Hummers. That sucks. And these days, that would have turned into a professionalized job where you'd be like a legit actual like mechanic. What do you do now? I look for better employment. Yo. You were. You're a former part time store lackey, right? You're uh, no so, longer a store that's lackey. That's right. I looked my I looked my GM in the face today. Or not today, but yesterday. And he he and I have have some mutual respect where uh 